things you wanted to discuss? Yeah, now? thanks for having me. I think uh, yeah, let Michael's going to start, start if, okay, Mike. if you don't mind. And for those that I don't know, hello and welcome. My name is Michael Hughes. I'm a member of this board and also serve on the board of directors for the Annapolis Maritime Museum and Park. Uh, Ms. Bellis, I appreciate you joining us tonight. Also here is lead captain of the Wilma Lee, Captain Rick Flamond. The Annapolis Maritime Museum is a nonprofit and a solid city partner by providing not only a historic community gathering place and historic museum at our main campus in Eastport, but also significantly improving the city park at Ellen Moyer Nature Center as our education campus. We are solely and, and uniquely focused on our mission of educating children and adults about the ecology of the Chesapeake Bay and our rich maritime history. That's all we're about. In 2018, the museum purchased and subsequently spent several hundred thousand dollars restoring one of the few historic Chesapeake Bay skipjacks with the goal of using her to share the stories of the bay and provide another option for water access. After securing Coast Guard approval and hiring captains and staff, we set sail late last year only to met, be met with obstacle after obstacle to operate her out of downtown Annapolis in the city charter dock. One month after operating from the charter docks downtown, we were informed by the harbor master that there was a policy change and our fees were going to go up to $188 per day. Now, mind you, this is operating two cruises three days a week. At our christening ceremony, our mayor welcomed the Wilma Lee and was proud that through the Maritime Museum, we offered a true historic Chesapeake Bay experience. Oh, where'd I go? Um, we believe that uh, we, we, when you look at the, and, and jumping ahead here, and I know it's not approved, but with the, with the city dock master plan that has been reviewed and presented, um, on page 84 of that report, in section two, it states regarding maritime and water access, accommodate visitors who arrive to the city dock and want to get out on the water. Section three states, celebrate the maritime history and industry, recognizing the importance of maritime yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And additionally, the recommendation is, and I quote, assess lengthening the city, the state dock, do not reduce current charter tour transit passenger vessels, rather enhance the same and more, and allow additional operators to work in the area. The Woma Lee contributes to all of these, and yet time after time, we were met with roadblocks. Last year, when a tornado touched down on the South River, our captain wisely decided not to set sail on a charter. The harbor master fined us for not going out, thus requiring a four day notice of cancellation. I don't know about you, but did anyone see the derecho coming up a few years ago, four days in advance, let alone a summer thunderstorm? And after all, we are dealing with an 80 year old wooden boat. Um, yet we were fined for not sailing with guests on board and we stand by that decision. Yep, we had to pay for it. We also struggle to understand why the owner of a private company operating cruises out of downtown has been so influential in shaping policy, even go going so far as to present the proposed new city policy to the city's Maritime Advisory Board. We appreciate this owner wants to protect their nearly exclusive access to residents and guests of our city at City Dock, but we are not a threat to business. We are not competition. We are a nonprofit entity that operates in the best interests of our residents and visitors. We lose money operating this boat. We lose money. Our goal remains the same. Educate children and adults on the ecology of the Chesapeake Bay and our rich maritime history. We respectfully would like some answers to know why there is an obvious bias against the Wilma Lee operating just two dark charters a day, three days a week. The Harbor Master and subsequently this Rec and Parks Department and the city of Annapolis are here to be ambassadors for our city. And the Wilma Lee not only provides for that much needed water access, but also a true historic experience. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to Rick for any more details and any further detail. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Uh, so just a quick background. I uh, retired from IBM six years ago, maybe even seven years ago. And, uh, I've traveled the world. I've been to 85 countries, six continents. I have managed as many as 900 people. Um, I'm a retired IBM exec. And ideal retirement job, I come back to where I grew up. 
Annapolis. I consider Annapolis home. I remember in the winter months going down from McGarvey's uh, down to uh, Ego Alley. And, you know, the harbor was filled with all the work boats. And I can't picture that there was a skipjack there, but I'm sure there must have been one. Um, so as far as the Wilmily, I, I was brought on after the purchase to help it pass U.S. Coast Guard inspections, which we did, and then get a business up and running um, where we would achieve our museum objectives, getting adults and children out on the water, sharing our excitement and enthusiasm about our maritime history and the ecology of the Bay. Um, so as far as the charter dock, uh, Beth, you'll be familiar with the big uh, grant documentation and I'm showing the group here, exhibit H. And uh, what you'll see there is uh, Ego Alley, um, the big Naval Academy used to be the uh, uh, Halsey. Yeah, Halsey in the top right. Um, and what you can see in the color code, the, the red is transient dock space. The uh, yellow is watermark for the water taxis, great service, the Miss Anne little tour boats um, and their barge office. And then the Harbor Queen is along the frontage. In front of the Harbor Queen is the blue area known as the Charter Dock. And then you can see the green area, city property, property previously used by the Sailing Hall of Fame. So that just gives you an orientation of what we're talking about specifically is the Charter Dock. So um, when we were ready to launch, uh, it was uh, August 8th and uh, the city, you know, clearly in this uh, pandemic, set up uh, economic recovery zones around the city, one of which was led by Captain uh, Goslin, responsible for setting the policy procedures around the economic recovery zone. A disclaimer, I only know what I've read and what I can see and what people have told me. If I'm wrong, please tell me if I've misinterpreted something. But this is my understanding that this uh, economic recovery zone was to encourage the use um, of, the, for, of the charter dock and eliminate all fees. And so we launched on August 8th with the assumption, no fees, great for us to start, get people out on the water. Uh, well, we began uh, making reservations at this charter dock, seven trips a week, uh, two on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And we actually had a total of 38 reservations. Over the entire season, most of them were free. We carried over 1,600 passengers. Amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and those were for narrated, live narration heritage tours, as well as sunset cruises. We received notice in uh, early August, I believe, that the policy had changed, that beginning September, it would be half off, and in October, they were going up to full price, $188 for the Wilma Lee. Now, the documentation says we charge for length overall. Our documented length overall is uh, 50 foot. Um, but there is a clause in there that says we can charge additional at the Harbor Master's uh, prerogative, if you will, uh, to charge for bow spritz and davits on the back of the boat, which we were charged for an additional 15 or 25 feet. So we're charged for 75 feet. So that brought it to the 188. Um, the, uh, let's see, so we began paying half, and then in October, paying full price. Um, there were a few overlaps at times with uh, Watermark's big boat trying to use the charter dock. Harbor Master would ask or their assistant, hey, would you uh, be able to be off the dock by 6 p.m. or 7 p.m., whatever it was? Said, Absolutely, we'll do that. We'll come in early, we'll leave early. No problem, we can contact our guests. The, at the time, the maximum we could carry is 20 passengers due to COVID restrictions. So we worked 
probably three times with the Harbor Master and Watermark on uh, going to one of the other sections of the city dock area to pick up our passengers or to drop them off. It worked well. Uh, let's see. So, in, so it, it, to me, this was not the best uh, relationship with the Harbor Master. I had asked to meet with the Harbor Master a few times during the year and was never able to do that. Never saw Harbor Master on the dock. You, you used the word ambassador. I, I didn't see that. And then um, I reached out to the Harbor Master in January of this year, extending an olive branch. Hey, would you like to go have a coffee? And uh, came back, said, no, not a coffee. How about my office? Okay, that's fine. A little more formal, that's fine. And I'm gonna invite my two deputies. Said, fine, I'll drop an agenda and send it to you. Monday morning, I get a notice that the meeting is no longer face-to-face. -face. It's a Zoom meeting, Harbor Master, two deputies, and the city attorney. And I asked why the city attorney? And it came back that said, well, um, if your agenda is not what I need to discuss, I need to discuss the rules, regulations, and what's prohibited on the city dock. I was like, whoa. I'm you know, extending an olive branch and I get my hand bit off. And so I declined the meeting. Um, then I find out that the Harbor Master has been working on a new charter dock policy since the fall of 2020. It actually was presented by Debbie Goslin at the Maritime Advisory Board. Um, at the time, the uh, city attorney asked the Maritime Advisory Board not to distribute this policy until it was ready for public comment. It was put up on March 16th. I may have my dates wrong. And we had two weeks to comment. I provided the comments. I provided a four page response. Did not hear anything back from the city. I understand they don't need to, but the big issue and what we face it, as Michael has said, this boat historic, it is a, a gem for this city. It should be front and center, a showcase for our maritime heritage. The city should help us. We're a nonprofit. It's an attraction. It's an attraction. The more people that come to, to see a skipjack, the more people that will go to restaurants and bars and ride the Harbor Queen and the woodwind and everything else. Um, the new policy as posted cut the number of charters from as many as you want in a day, as long as they were approved, to one a day. And my question is why? There's no reason, I mean, we use the charter dock 38 times. My guess is Watermark with their two big boats used it 20 at most. I didn't see any other vessels come in during the season. I worked on City Dock for three years. That charter dock is not used very often. So I wonder why is it cut to one? So we'd only be able to offer a heritage tour or a <clears throat> sunset cruise, not both. Um, the cancellation policy has not changed. So I still need to cancel four days in advance or I will be charged. And as Michael <laughs> referred to, you know, summer pop-up thunderstorms, I'm not going to take an 80 foot or 75 foot, 80 year old wooden skipjack out in possible thunderstorms. I need to be able to cancel that for the safety of my passengers and not have the motivation, oh, but we need the money for the museum. That's horrible. That's unsafe. Um, I would say that's Pretty much it. I, I, I would like to understand from the Harbor Master, why are we limited to one charter per day? And if I've gotten anything wrong that's of significance, I'm, I'm ears. I'm glad to listen. So, so that was an awful lot of information. There was a ton of inaccuracies and accusations. And I'm surprised that in this forum, I wasn't given time to prepare, but I can certainly respond to all of those issues. I'm going to start with 
um, the accusation that you are only allowed to have one charter per day. Absolutely untrue. You can have as many charters per day as you like. The fees for charters are set by city council. I'm not able to waive those. So if you wanted to have seven charters per day, you may have them. And I would tell you that they cost what the city council has decided that they cost. Um, moving- So help me understand, if I can, uh, the, the second bullet point in the um, page two. Each charter consists of one initial arrival time, one cruise departure time, one cruise return time, and one final departure. You're only allowed one a day. Am I misinterpreting how that? Yes, you are. Okay. The, what you're reading is how the fee structure goes. So if you wanted to take a wedding in the morning and a sunset cruise in the evening, that would be two charters. That's always how it has been. It didn't change. It wasn't punitive to you. That's always how it has been. So if you load up in the morning, you get 45 minutes, you depart, you come back from your wedding, you let your guests off, and then you wanna do a sunset cruise in the evening. That is two cruises. To be honest, there was so much conflict this past year that uh, there were times we were so exhausted that we allowed and shouldn't have the Maritime Museum to do multiple charters on the same day for one charge. Shouldn't have happened. It will never happen again because that's not what the council intends and that's not permitted. Um, moving on, um, talking about length overall. The industry standard is to charge for linear dock space based on length overall. If you Google it, if you look it up, if you talk to multiple marinas around the country, it is length overall. Because if your boat is only 45 or 50 feet on deck, but 75 feet with bow spritz and uh, whatever else comes off of the Wilma Lee, um, that's what it costs. Because if we don't, we use the software, if we don't do that, we would be double booked. So uh, backing up for a moment, just to let the group know uh, my background, I've been working on Maryland's waterways for more than 30 years. I've been a teacher in the classroom and on the water for my entire adult life. I wear a gold oyster around my neck. There is nothing more, uh, more important about the face of Maryland than her, her, than her heritage with regard to the Chesapeake Bay. And I feel that it's a hallowed cause and critical in maintaining the face of Maryland. So the accusations that are being pushed forward today are very offensive to me and very surprising. Um, that what I have, what I have um, maintained is only what is in the city code and what the Office of Law has advised me to do. I understand that there was a recovery zone and I understand that that was at first a great opportunity for the Heritage Museum to showcase her boat. I think that skipjacks are amazing. I'm so glad you got to pick up passengers there, but that recovery zone was not an invitation to monopolize our charter dock without regard to our already existing cancellation policy. That cancellation policy wasn't new. It is 100% um, our mayor has heard of it. I have discussed it with him in detail. He supports it. And it is not true that four days out, you would be charged full price. And it was not a fine. That is not true. What the policy says is if three days out, you don't cancel, you would be charged a half price tour. It also says that you could change your departure and arrival times. So if we get a pop-up storm in the South River, for example, it would be reasonable to say, so we can't come at 1 p.m., but it looks like these storms are gonna march across the area and be done by 3 p.m. We'd like to move our trip to 3 p.m., no problem. 
But what has happened with Captain Flamand is, is, is very unfortunate. And it is a, a level of conflict that's, that's not welcome, it's not warranted, and it's not necessary. And I would add that the accusation that I'm somehow um, playing favor to one company over another is completely false and it's, it's offensive to me. Okay, we're back. We lost our connection here. I'm sorry. Is everybody there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Beth? I'm here. Okay, I'm sorry. But I don't know if this happens very often here, but uh, sorry, it just went down. So I, I think, I, think uh, I forget exactly where you were, Beth. I believe that you were talking about how many times that uh, people could come in and out. You said something, if you want to do seven charters a day if needed and the fees for the charters are set by the city council. And I think that's, yeah. what, we, I think that's what we lost. Yeah, and I, I understand that. And what I'm not understanding is this new, this is new, correct this year where you're only allowed one? I think she said- So that. I had an, I, I spoke for a very long time and I'm happy to repeat all of it. It is absolutely not new, and it is absolutely not true that you can only have one charter per day. You may have as many charters as you like, but you may you must pay the fee that is decided by the city council. Mm -hmm. So I, I forgive me if you've already heard this, because I don't know where you cut off. If you would like to have a wedding in the morning and a sunset cruise in the afternoon, those are two separate charters. Right now, so I don't care if you're at the dock for 15 minutes and 15 minutes and 15 minutes and 15 minutes. A charter is a group of people that are coming to the dock for a specific purpose. And so I have been in communication with the Office of Law with all of this. This is not something I've made up. I take extreme offense to the fact that this group is accusing me of uh, favoring one group over another. That is simply not the case. And the inaccuracies and the accusations are, are very surprising in this particular format. I, I'm surprised that this is happening right now. So Beth, if I look at last year's documentation, uh, can you point out where it says that only one charter uh, is allowed? I don't see that. I think that you just- No, from prior years. So I'm saying this is new and she's saying it's not. There isn't anything in any paperwork that says you may only take one charter per day. So I'm not sure where anyone is seeing that. And if we want to have this conversation, we should certainly include well, attorney Ashley Leonard, who has drafted up all of these documents uh, with a lot of study and, and um, you know, uh, care. And she can uh, go over all of this with you because we have spent hours upon hours upon hours making sure it's fair to all the groups. Um, you cut off or we cut off. So I did miss the point that I did not see that last year or in 2019 that you were only allowed one pickup and one drop off per vessel. Again, no one has ever said ever before or now that you may only have one pickup and drop off. That has never been true in the past and it is not true now, but you must pay for your charters. So if you have a wedding party in the morning and you have a sunset cruise in the afternoon, you must pay for both cruises. And that means like each charter is a particular group of people that you are taking out on your boat. So you pay a per charter fee, not a per day fee. But apparently. Yeah. 
I, I feel like this conversation should be happening perhaps with the Maritime Museum instead of in this forum, because I feel like there are so many um, inaccuracies and accusations that aren't even true that I'm not sure why we're having a public forum about it. We, we would welcome that opportunity. You, you tell us the date. And I will make sure our executive director, chairman of the board, and Captain Rick are there. Oh, oh, may I intervene? Certainly. My name is Archie Trader. I'm the director of Annapolis Recreation and Parks. I am Beth Bellis's supervisor. And I concur with her. Uh, this is not really the forum. Actually, the forum for this conversation should be a public hearing in front of the city council to answer those questions about- Archie, I sent you a letter a couple months ago and I didn't get a response. Okay. Respectfully uh, requesting some insight as to what's going on. I didn't even get a response. Okay, well, be that as it may, and I apologize for that. We must go move forward and come to some conclusions and uh, about this situation and fix this situation uh, for, for, for the benefit of the city as well as the Maritime Museum. And the okay. only way that we can do that is to move forward with some type of hearing in front of the city city council and the law office. Yeah, I mean, my my background is business. Historically, I work business people to business people to sign. Is it, is it to Greg speaking? Because it's hard for me to understand who's speaking. Yeah, this is Captain Rick. Okay, it'd be so, nice if we knew who was speaking. Okay. I'm sorry, this is Captain Rick. My background is business people, deal with business people, and once you have an understanding of what you wanna do, then you bring in the lawyers. You're welcome to bring in lawyers if you feel that's necessary at our first face to face. Oh, it, well, well it, with, with the city, with, with, with business done by the city, it, it, is, it, it behooves the departments, regardless of what department it is, to bring in lawyers right from the very beginning uh, so that we can have an understanding of, 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 of what we should and should not do in, in the face of code and law. See, okay. we're, not, we're not lawyers and, and we can easily make mistakes in, in our positions. So that, uh, that's, that's, this is not a, a, uh, a civil or a civilian type of process here. This is a government process uh, that, that we must um, follow certain protocols within the city government. And one of the protocols that we have is that we involve the uh, uh, law office as, 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 as quick as we can to get an understanding of, of, of what we need to do and what we, what, what we can't do. Okay, uh, this is Michael. If I circulate an email to all involved parties tomorrow, can we set a goal of meeting sometime in the next three weeks? Yes, we can. Thank you. I'm happy to do that. Um, I think there's a lot of misinformation that's making people upset. And um, I really would like to dispel that. It, it feels like this is unnecessary angst. Oh, I well, okay. this is Rick. I welcome any clarifications. We appreciate that. We'll circulate an email tomorrow and look to set up a date with all necessary parties. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anything else you'd like to call? No. Uh, I, I think I the think whole I'm purpose just... of this was just to get people talking, and yes. that's what Gavin yeah. asked me to do. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think we've uh, we've achieved that goal. Okay. So Harbor Master Beth Bellis, thank you very much for taking the time out when I know you don't have a lot of free time to yourself anyway. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you coming in. Hey, thank you. Okay. My pleasure. And I'll get back to you shortly in regards to the triathlon, hopefully by the middle of next week. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, are you going to stick around? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. It was nice meeting you. I can't find Okay. I'm pulling up the notes that Tammy sent out in regards to our, our uh, last meeting. And I guess, Mike, you have some changes that you already gave to Tammy in regards to the meetings. 
the last meeting. I don't believe I had any. Oh, didn't you give something to her today? No, I was going to send her any comments or anything to make it easier for these minutes. Got it. Got it. Like Rick, his name, spelling, all that kind of stuff. Got it. Okay. Well, very good. Does anybody have any comments on the last meeting minutes? Dawn? It was not there, but I thought it was an outstanding meeting. It really was. Believe it or not. Hello, is everybody there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Archie, do you ever have problems with uh, the stability of your internet connection? Actually, uh, I don't because I, I usually get on through my phone. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, because I don't have a camera on my computer, either in my office or at my Chrome, my Chromebook. Okay. I, I, I talked with Archie earlier today, and I want to uh, relay some of the comments that I've heard recently in regards to the great work that the Pitt Moyer Rec Center, covering a lot of different grounds from the vaccinations to having different events out here. And Archie, I think you've done a great job on all that. Well, thank you, Craig. But the credit really goes to the uh, the various divisions, uh, the parks division, the, the facility monitors, front desk people, and, and they all do a great job and they're pretty dedicated. And and also it really uh, gives, you know, the public an understanding of how valuable recreation is right up there, in my opinion, with fire and police, you know, not in any type of competition, but in, in a way that reaches the community beyond sports, sports and athletics. Thank you. Well, yeah, but we've got to, we... I can't hear you, Craig. Are you, are, are you talking? Can I be heard? Am I being heard? Hello? Oh, you know what I'm thinking. I hear you, uh, Mr. Trader. I, I I don't hear Craig. He might he might be um frozen. Okay. Just, can you um, do anything about Mr. Um, Harrison? Did he fall out or something? I don't see him. Um, he, he disconnected earlier, ma'am. Um, I believe okay. he, he, he must be having some internet issues. Everything's good on my end. Um, you guys are all coming through loud and clear. Um, okay. I'm, I'm just thinking he, he's got something going on on his end and he can give me a call if he needs to. My, my number's in the, in the calendar, but. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. not sure. I'm not sure if he, he, um, because I know when I was at the rec center, I was having problems uh, staying on as well. I just got home, so. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I, I'm thinking it's just some connectivity issues. I, I've already had the letter back in once, so um, we'll we'll see what happens. Hey, Don. Don, do you have access to run the meeting until he gets back on?
Come on. That's that. That's right there. Come on. No, 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 no. Do 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 do. Where are the pictures? Come on. Do 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 do. Boom. Come on.
Hello? Is everybody back on? This is Dawn. Hello. Hey, Dawn. This is Corey. I'm I'm here. I'm also hearing silence. I think Craig is not with us still. Okay. Uh, there's just no sense in going through the meeting if the majority of the people can't get back in again. Yeah, it's, I think we have a, I, I guess, a decision as to when to, how much more time do we allow for Craig to try to get back on, I guess, before we just cancel the meeting or postpone it. But I'm the newbie here, so I'll defer to others. <laughs> well, I hung on. <laughs> That's all I can say. I hung on. But, um, well, I don't know. Maybe maybe we can... Maybe we can get a mass email and some discussion and then try to try to be ahead of the game on the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yep. I see a fan of that. All right. You're running, driving through a dead zone. Maybe. <laughs> all right. I think we're done for the night. Have a good one. Okay. Take care. Well, you, guys are, you guys are ending it? Yeah, there, there's no sense. We don't have enough people to to handle it. So yeah, Tammy, we're we're calling it a a day. Okay. So we're, we'll have to. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Good night. Good night.